Hello and welcome to Don Bosco Youth Network Zambia. We are delighted to be with you once again, hosting you this morning. My name is Chiesa Cecilia Mungulove, and of course, I'm not alone in the studios. I have been joined by a very, very great and wonderful panel. So today we are talking about entrepreneurship, something that is very, very catchy currently to the community, but as well as to the young people. It is something that we have seen most of the people practicing. And of course, we intend on seeing more people getting into it. But of course, we'd like to have a better understanding on what really is entrepreneurship is all about or maybe how one can get into it so maybe we should pick it up from here what is entrepreneurship john thank you so much Archives, for that question in simple terms entrepreneurship is simply identifying a problem in your community and providing a solution to that problem either by providing a service or a product that is needed okay. sarah any additions it is identifying what is needed so this is like coming up with an innovation or you have to be creative in a way to bring out something that the community has never had before mm -hmm. yes i think most of the time if i hear entrepreneurship what comes to my mind is somebody owning a shop maybe selling fritters you know just doing something that has to do with the, the products or service and then you are getting money at the end of it all so maybe this brings us to wanting now to understand what are the different types of entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. So there are different types of um, entrepreneurship. Uh, first of all, there's what you call small-scale entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Now, small-scale entrepreneurship is whereby you just set up a business on a smaller scale. Maybe it can just be at your home or in a very small shop. That is the first uh, form of entrepreneurship. Now, the second uh, form of entrepreneurship is what you call social entrepreneurship. Now, the objective of a social inter inter entrepreneur is to maximize profit, but as, as well as also um, providing a solution uh, to a problem that is affecting the community. Because we know that um, the objective of every business person or the, the conventional entrepreneur is only to maximize profit. That is why you venture into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to social entrepreneurs, it, it has also the component of uh, solving a problem of the community. Now, there is also what is known as the serial, serial entrepreneurship. So first of all, there is the, what we call the um, uh, the serial entrepreneur, this is, this is an individual who opened up a lot of businesses in other ventures. Because we know that, uh, for instance, if I say I want, I want to start entrepreneurship, let's say um, in technology, I'm just going to be known to be selling maybe laptops, uh, computers, and phones, and other gadgets. But when we talk about serial entrepreneur, this is an individual who ventures into different, uh, different spheres. So this person can be in technology, uh, can be in economics, and they can also be in, in agriculture. So basically, these, these are some of the types of entrepreneurship that are in existence. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to believe that on this panel we have some entrepreneurs. And of, of course, I know about Sarah and John. So just maybe like best to pick it up from what kind of business are you doing and where, wh where did you draw the motivation to start this particular business and how has it helped you personally, Sarah? Okay. All right. So uh, for me personally, I'm a baker and I'm into food business. Mm -hmm. So not only do I bake cakes, but I also make samosas and sausage rolls. Mm -hmm. I cater for functions. Yes. So that's basically what I do. And then the motivation, I think it was drawn from from the kitchen. I must say I was born in the kitchen. <laughs> I love cooking. And then it being my passion, I thought uh, it would be great if I can use my passion to generate income. So it all started when, during the COVID times, where I was working, we were put on half salary. And then eventually a friend came and told me, because I had been baking prior. So a friend just came and told me, you know, you can make money from, from what you do. If I made a birthday cake for the son, then later on, the people that tested the cake started making orders and no, want the person that made that cake to come. So eventually, I would, that's how I started my business, where I would, get, uh, I would get orders from connections, like from people who introduced me to other people. And then uh, I must say my business started in the kitchen with the things that I had from home. But it was difficult for me to expand because I really didn't know how to calculate what and all. But through interactions, I had to interact with people that own restaurants, people that have been in the baking industry. So eventually I was able to, to be helped. And then from that also, um, I also saved the internet because there's enough information like when you're starting up a business, what you need to do. Yeah, and that's what I did. I also had to have it registered. And here we are, I'm, I'm making money. 
Okay. And I'm happy. Uh, currently, I run CBA Investments. So under CBA, we buy and sell and rent out properties. And we also give financial aid to small businesses and students. Second, I run uh, a manager thrift store. So we deal with clothes, salon, and anything concerning fashion. Yes. So the inspiration to uh, to engage into business or entrepreneurship, I think it's from reading books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of books recently and before I even started. So I draw that inspiration. And also, as one of uh, my colleagues here has mentioned, technology. Uh, the world has become a global village, it has been globalized. Mm-hmm. Distance is no longer a barrier. You can able to communicate to somebody who is very far. So it's, it's at, it will at a time when you used to not find it difficult to raise capital or funds because you can do various things through technology. Through technology, I came to see what other young people are doing and I get to draw inspiration from that. Then the other part of that is what uh, business can one start on a low budget? For me, um, I'll mention two. One is how, is what the method that I use myself. Okay. So, first thing that, uh, before you even think of say, buying and selling product or giving out what, you're supposed to understand that, you're supposed to learn the ways of trade, how to sell out there. It's, it's a whole strategy. Okay? Having the goods is one thing. Being able to sell it out and being able to develop a business is another thing. So I started that by volunteering, okay? I was working at this shop on a volunteering basis, no pay. And I got to learn the ways of trading, of buying and selling, of giving services and all that, okay? So the most cheapest business that people can do, I can advise is by volunteering. Start by volunteering. First, learn the ways of trading, okay? The simple ways of trading. In the streets, learn how to trade, learn how money works, okay? What you may think of. Because you can have a 100 kwacha, a 200 kwacha, but are you able to trade? Are you able to, uh, to sell and buy products? So the first step is first to learn the ways of trading. Then a more practical uh, business that one can do on a low budget is selling clothes, okay? Fashion is at the center of everything now. It has taken the world at a storm. You get the point. It's, it's, it's happening right now. And fashion is, is everything, okay? From what you are right now, the, the resources that you have, everything yeah, is fashion. Yeah. All the small, small details yeah, I can but, see there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so watches, yeah. Actually. So, one can order that mm-hmm. and resell. But for that, learn the ways of trading. I think that is very, very insightful. Most of us can agree. Uh, before you, you, you chip in, I would like <laughs> you to maybe just talk about the skills of you know, entrepreneurship because he has highlighted things to do with voluntary, which is one of the things that most of the young people currently don't like to do because we just want money. You are told to volunteer like, mm, free services. I think, you know, I'll need some money. So as you talk about um, the, the different types of skills that an entrepreneur needs, maybe you should also touch a little on uh, you know, wanting to volunteer and not for others in order for you to learn. When you talk about entrepreneurship, it is not always um, the, the the supply of goods. You can also be supplying your own skills. So, there, um, like for instance, if, if you don't have money, you can start also earning income by selling your skills. Um, then you can start as a, a freelancer. Like for instance, you are a student, right? so you can say, okay, um, since I've got skill in uh, proposal writing, proposal writing and I can write assignments on behalf of the individuals, so as you, are, as you are offering your services, they can also be giving you money in return. Another way is what we call um, a consultancy. You can see that, okay, maybe he was a doctor and now he's retired. Now he's no longer operating as a doctor, but he's just offering his services as a, as a consultant. But then I would like to understand, how then can we inculcate entrepreneur skills in youth? The process to initiate uh, entrepreneurship skills among the youth is to point. Mm-hmm. Okay, it requires uh, both uh, the youth and the other stakeholder, which can be the government, uh, the church, the other organizations. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, on the part of the young people, young people must be willing to learn. It starts from there. So, the government should recapitalize on um, putting in strategies, especially in gaming institutions where young people are able to access financial education. Yeah. One thing in business is they're going to always receive criticism from mm-hmm. people, okay? And if you let that criticism 
yes. push you down, then uh, you won't grow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Education is important. Yes. In as much as it won't um, really give you with the wealth, or you don't really get rich and stuff like that, but a person who is operating in business is educated is different from one who is not educated. You need the business to be more open minded. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's also the challenge of just lack of capital. You don't have to start a business. The ideas are very creative, innovative enough, but you just don't have capital. My words of encouragement or advice, I think, to, to you guys out there, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we, we have been given talents. Even the Bible rightly puts it. We, we all have talents. If uh, your talent can feed you, please, don't hesitate because you'll be one of the happiest people. Yeah, what it is is that you'll be gaining money from what you love to do. So if uh, what you love to do is able to put food on your table, I think that's, that's a plus. So just follow your talents. Don't be like that seven who went and buried their talent because you'll be answerable to God when you go to heaven to say, ah, I give you this, what did you do with it? My advice to an individual who is planning to venture into entrepreneurship, the first step is to conduct what is known as the uh, market research. You should be able to, market, to assess the market, what is, the, um, what is lacking in a particular community, what is lacking in a particular market. Then after you identify what is lacking, then you also identify what, at what price am I going to be charging uh, for this kind of service. Then also, um, as we area uh, define entrepreneurship, that it also comes with a lot of risks. Um, but what you have seen, is, and there are also losses that come along the way. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to, to advise people to take very good, uh, good care uh, of the profits that they generate. Because business comes, in, uh, sometimes it booms and sometimes it shrinks. So but, um, in those moments where your business is booming, you are selling a lot, you are making a lot of profits. Um, it is at, at that moment where you need to exercise it. Uh, financial discipline, you need to be saving part of the profits that you're having, such that by the time you are going to encounter losses in other departments, you should be able to make, to, to make up by the savings that you have been making. Thank you so much for watching us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Don Bosco Youth Network Zambia. And of course, follow us on Facebook, Don Bosco Youth Vibes. We love you and we love being with you. I have been your host, Chivesa Cecilia Mungulue. And I was joined by a very, very wonderful and great panel. I was interacting with entrepreneurs and also it will be somewhere here. So I had Mr. Raphael on the show, Sarita as well as John. Now do join us next week as we get to host the Dreams organization as we continue to talk about entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned.